So listen, do you remember when I said the similarities of the equations of general relativity and hydrodynamics suggest you could find the equivalent of unruh radiation in a large body of water? I thought I said that to you. Hey, aren't you doing this? Yeah, I am. How funny. So, first off, my name is Sofia, and I'm currently working at Centra under the supervision of Professor Vitor Cardoso. My master thesis, whose title is Acoustic Black Holes and Super Resonance Mechanisms, consists in studying a phenomenon called superradiance in analog gravity. In particular, our goal is to figure out a way to incorporate viscosity in the fluid models we're working with. Sounds complicated. Let's start from the beginning. In 1967, John Wheeler first described the black hole as what is left behind after an object has undergone complete gravitational collapse. Space-time is so strongly curved that no light can come out, no matter can be ejected, and no measuring rod can ever survive without being put in. Any kind of object that falls into the black hole loses its separate identity, preserving only its mass, charge, angular momentum, and linear momentum. Black holes can be described by the theory of general relativity. Developed in 1915 by Albert Einstein, this theory describes gravity as a consequence of the curvature of space-time. Schwarzschild was the first to present a solution to Einstein's equations. It described the space-time created by a static mass point. So it is basically just a black hole there existing. A more interesting solution is the Kerr one. It was discovered in 1963 by Roy Kerr and it describes a rotating black hole. There's a lot of interesting stuff happening around rotating black holes. Superradiance, remember my thesis title, is one of those interesting phenomena. Superradiance is a radiation enhancement process happening around dissipative bodies. Superradiance in rotating black holes was first discovered in 1971 by Zeldovic. He showed that under certain conditions, if you send a pack of waves to the black hole, they come back amplified. This means that they come back with a higher energy than the one they had initially. This is not as puzzling as it might seem. You can think of a merry-go-round in a children's playground. If you jump out of the merry-go-round, something is bound to go wrong. Both in the merry-go-round and in the black hole, this extra energy is extracted from the rotating object. If you continue on jumping off the merry-go-round, it will eventually come to a stop, as it is losing energy every time you do so. The exact same thing happens for black holes. The technical term here is black hole evaporation. Superradiance in a confined environment is unstable. If you're able to build a mirror around a black hole and send waves there in the superradiant regime, after some reflections, the energy accumulated will be so big that the mirror cannot contain it and explodes. This is a black hole bomb. This is all fine and dandy, but black holes are astrophysical bodies of difficult observation and direct study. This motivated scientists to try and reproduce black holes on Earth. Now, hush there, we're not really creating black holes, we're using water to reproduce characteristics of black holes. Imagine you are standing on the surface of a river with your friend. Call your friend Albert. You can only communicate using Morse code in the free surface of the water. You're in luck because the river flows towards Albert, so everything you send downstream is bound to reach your friend. Now Albert is facing a challenge. He needs to send his Morse code signals with a speed that is higher than the river on the background. But suppose he is in a fast flow region where it is impossible for the code to move upstream. Albert will be getting all your messages but you might never hear back from him. This is the definition of an horizon. That is, there's a region of space from where nothing can escape. This acoustic horizon in the river is the analogous of an event horizon in a black hole. Finding these analogs and using them to study phenomena associated with black holes that we would otherwise not be able to measure is the goal of an area of research called analog gravity. The event horizon is only one of the features that you can reproduce in the lab. The model I will be working with is a standard draining bathtub. The vortex created by the draining flow is very similar to what happens with the rotating black hole on space-time. So that the models are as realistic as possible, the more physical details we can encode in them, the merrier. The goal of my work consists in incorporating viscosity in this particular model. Many exciting experiences are being done in the Quantum Gravity Laboratory. Just last December, the team published a paper where they described the first experimental detection of superradiance. If you're interested in learning more about this experiment, you should definitely check out this video.